I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, my second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bang League here coming back at you with another video. Today, back on Ozark State Outlaws Dynasty, we are doing the offseason. And we start with a new record. Omar Williams with the new record for receiving yards in a season. And he did that just as a freshman. We'll see what he can come out and do now as a sophomore, then a junior as he continues to get better. But we have a coach upgrade. We're going to advance to the end of the season. And please, can we recruit some studs to Ozark State? I feel like our recruiting class is not fantastic. We're in a recruiting battle with a number of the guys we're going after. And it keeps showing me that Randall Elliott locked us out which happened, um, you know, months ago at this point. But there we go. Victors of the New Orleans Bowl, Sun Belt champions, went from 4-8 and eight to 6-6, six and six, now 10-3. and three. As we've been killing it here at Ozark State under Bengus Khan. But now we have to advance to the saddest part, and that is players leaving. All right, players leaving. And I have a new offensive coordinator, I guess. So, Scott Lewis graduates. Ryan Muller is gone. Jeff Fisher. Edwin Garrett. Pedro Goddard. I forgot about him. He's gone. The Outlaw. Backup safety, Randall Barron. Terrence Lawrence, backup running back. Alan Rooney, an offensive lineman. Clinton McKeon, brother of Deontay McKeon. Kedrick Cunningham. Right tackle, Jabari Siegel. Daryl Joseph. Who had a big play in the New Orleans Bowl. And those are all of them. All gone. That's crazy. Some really big names here from season one and two. And even this year. And uh, let's pour one out in the chat in the comments section. I do want to spend our new offensive coordinator's points. Ron Carragher is the guy. Well, it's all about injury and stamina with Colby Spencer. What should we do here? Break tackle. We have a ton of points. Let's go all into this. Throw power and accuracy. Eight upgrades still. Pass blocking. That's impact blocking. I don't really care. What is this one? Carrying. We do fumble a bit. So we'll max out that skill. We have five remaining. What are these? Plus two to agility. One strength, one acceleration. This one's awareness. Uh, who cares? Let me see, uh, let me see impact blocking. Can I undo some of that? Oh, no. We're going to keep it the way it is. We'll get athlete eventually and then mathlete. But, uh, big stuff with the new offensive coordinator and Ron Carragher. And then for Bengus Khan, it's all about recruiting. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that just yet. Hold on. I'm going to, I'll redo it off camera. For head coach, what should I do here? That's recruiting weeks at or recruiting points at first. Pipeline. We could go ki uh, kitchen sink. Each recruit can have 50 extra points. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah, let's do the opener. All right, transfer request is up next. Let's see who's going to join the Ozark State Outlaws in Season 5. Of course, Season 4 is up next. I don't think any of our players are going to get drafted. Yeah, clearly not. Maybe next year. But transfer requests... Nobody, really. That's wild. All right, off to recruiting. Really got to make it count now. All right, time for recruiting. This is where we make it count. 15,000 points to convince some of these players to come to Ozark State. Obviously can't do anything with Randall Elliott. Even though he's an absolute beast, we didn't make the cut by far. Far and away, not even in the neighborhood. <laughs> Let's see where we're who we're in a battle for. Ryan Collier, this is someone I want. Four-star receiver, 73 overall already. Great route running. Like 90 carrying too. He's someone that absolutely needs to play at Ozark State, so we're gonna dump a lot of points into him. Do we want Chase Moses? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't really think I want to dump points into him. Is Will Jordan better? 
Yeah, he's way better. Despite only having a one overall bonus. Alright, this is how I'm arranging my points. I'm going big on Oliver Nunez. Willie Parrish is a player I really, really want to get. He just looks insane. I'm going to be super disappointed if we don't get him. Um, just trying to get as many players as we can. And it, like, if we don't get Joey Patton, I don't really care. I almost feel like this 255 is a waste. And I, I don't know. Those 60 don't really matter on Manuel Bell. Uh, we're going to add them into Oliver Nunez. Really want Willie Parrish. I think we can steal him from BC. Want Ryan Collier. But at the end of the day, we already do have some really solid receivers. So if we don't get him, I'm not really too mad about it. We do need a tight end, but it's not like McQueen is anything to, you know, call home about. So I'm going more into Willie Parrish. This is how I'm arranging them. Hopefully we can get a lot of these top players. The guys I want most, Willie Parrish is number one, I think. Donald Hall, those are the top two. It's not an insane recruiting class, but if we can bring them in, I think it'd be very, very good for us. I'll see you guys at the next week. So, it is signing day, and things didn't go exactly to plan, as usual. Um, didn't get everyone that I wanted, and Manuel Bell has not decided still for some reason. Ryan Collier, we lost out on by 40 points, which is kind of annoying. Because I wanted him on the team. And we lost by 40. The Raging Cajuns pulled up ahead. We got Michael McQueen. We got Chase Moses. We got Donald Hall, Kurt Graves, Chris Ferris, Walter Graham, Adam Boyd, and Willie Parrish. Oliver Nunez went to Oklahoma State. So that was kind of annoying. Stephen Branch also. Uh, so, I mean, like, I, I got some of the players I wanted. I'm happy to add in Willie Parrish, Adam Boyd. Willie Parrish, we barely beat out Boston College, it seems. But, it, uh, just we lost out on some guys by such a small amount that I would have really liked to add. Donald Hall was a big one, though. Chase Moses was kind of shocking. Michael McQueen, kind of shocking. But Ryan Collier... We missed out on by 40 points. It, ah, oh, it kills. Time for position changes. So the question is, you know, who do we move around and where? What do we move them to? Colby Spencer's now a senior. That's interesting. Uh, at halfback, I guess, what, redshirt freshman Josh Shelton's gonna be our guy? I, Kurt Graves kind of looks like our best option. We did not recruit running back well at all. Tim O'Brien still here. But I think we're fine at wide receiver. Like, it wasn't our biggest need. Roland Francisco is a senior, so he'll be gone at the end of this year. We have Omar Williams, Tony Gates, who we redshirt last year. He's very good. So we're fine at wide receiver, so Ryan Collier wasn't super important. But if you look at the guys that aren't going to be here next season, Hunter Register... Roland Francisco, Ron Norman. So all we have is, and maybe even Rob Gaither, but Rob Gaither, Roland Francisco, Omar Williams are going to be like our guys. Hunter, I, I don't know what we're going to do. They're going to stay at, at a, a wide receiver for now. Left tackle, it's all a bunch of seniors. Adding in Donald Hall was big for us. We're definitely going to redshirt him. Center, we're good. Right guard, senior, but we're fine. Right tackle, senior, but we're fine. At left end, we have Deontay McKeon. Redshirt freshman, Chris Holmes. Don't want to move any of these guys. Sandoval Slaughter is cool. Terrence Hodges. We could move around our defensive lineman a bit. Like Shelton Neal could play right end. I think we're going to move him over. At defensive tackle, we should be more than fine. Yeah, Daryl Bradford's only a junior. Then we have Fat Albert, who's only a sophomore now. So we're fine there. Donnell Mason, Jr. We're fine at defensive tackle. And then at outside linebacker, Colt 45 is still going to start. We also have Tavarius Skinner. What do we do with Willie Parrish? Is he going to play right outside linebacker? Yeah, he's going to start his freshman year. He is going to play right outside linebacker for us. Hopefully pretty good. I mean, he looks pretty sick. 85 speed, 92 acceleration, decent catching. 82 jumping, 86 hit power, 77 power move, 76 finesse move, 78 block shit, 80 pursuit. 
coverage is not that great. But he does have really high tackling. I can't find it. Yeah, 76. So that's pretty much higher than anybody else that we have. And then a cornerback. We have a bunch of solid corners. Adam Jones was a big recruit for us. Really, really fast. Devin Robeson's now a senior. He's going to play free safety. Mike Lee Jr. He's going to play strong safety. The question is, though, do we want to move any of these cornerbacks back? I'm going to redshirt Adam Jones, probably. So, no. We're going to keep everybody where they are. So, nope. Oh, actually, athletes. That's right. Do we bring in any? Only Adam Boyd. What do I want to play him at? He looks like a receiver. He looks like a receiver. Can you play defense at all? A little bit. Ooh, he's a safety. Let's see what his overall is at wide receiver. 76. What's, it, what's your overall free safety? 76. You're going to play free safety for us. So that is a really, really good freshman free safety in Adam Boyd. Big, big recruit. Now my favorite part, we're going to training results. We could very well have some players in the 90s. I'm looking at you, Devin White. Training results, we do have two guys in the 90s. We'll go position by position, starting off with the quarterback group. Colby Spencer, now a 90 overall, plus 5. 92 speed, agility doesn't change, acceleration's good. And honestly, Chris Porter, he was a 5-star recruit that didn't turn out to be as good as we hoped. But he's up to an 80, uh, 82 overall now, so that's not bad at all. Especially considering he's only a sophomore. So we could have two years with him uh, after this, or I guess including... No, after this. So Colby Spencer would be gone. We could have him for his junior and senior year. But um, he has 77 break tackle. Jesus. Yeah, Chris Porter could be the real deal. Super high juke. Colby Spencer's got really high carrying and catching. Because he's also like a wide receiver. That's part of what brings up his overall, I guess. 94 throw power. Throw accuracy is up to 85. Chris Porter's trying to develop that arm a little bit. He's more of a mobile quarterback. And Colby Spencer's a guy that could have even played cornerback or safety for us. Just a really, really talented player overall. At halfback, Josh Shelton and Jeremy Chance, both a 76 overall. So running back's gone very downhill for us. Who are we going to start? Probably, I don't know. They're both, not, oh, 98 Juke? What? All right, yeah, Josh Shelton's going to start 98 with great receiving ability out of the backfield, and he's only a redshirt freshman. 86 speed's kind of meh, but, like, he's a beast. 98 juke. What? Hunter registers up to an 88. Roland Francisco up to an 83. Rob Gaither to an 82, up four. Omar Williams up to an 82. Tony Gates up to an 81. Who, who even is that? Uh, we're, we're fine at wide receiver. He's only a redshirt freshman this year. Omar Williams, a sophomore. Rob Gaither, redshirt junior. Roland Francisco is a senior. So Tony Gates even has 94 speed. And none of these guys have any strength except for Hunter Register, who has insane run after the catch ability. Omar Williams, 93 speed is pretty good. What about catching for these guys? Omar Williams has surprisingly low catching for how good he's played for us. Um, Roland Francisco's catching traffic is so bad. But look at that route running. 86, including 97 jumping. So that's really good at wide receiver. Tight end Jake Rodriguez, now a senior. He's up to an 89 overall. 82 speed, 99 awareness. Super high trucking at an 86. Good catching, good spectacular catch. Great catch in traffic, good route running. Left tackle, Howard is up to a 78. That's good. Jeff McGrew up to an 81. At center, we're in a really good spot. 79 overall. Well, who went up 7? Mike McKenzie, the redshirt freshman, up to a 75 overall from a 68. Wow, that is a huge improvement. Right guard, Corey Tidwell, redshirt senior, and Kingsley Duckett, redshirt senior. On the uh, defensive line, Deontay McKeon is an 81. He's a redshirt senior. Chris Holmes, the redshirt freshman, finally going to play this year. He looks incredible at an 80 overall. What's the uh, power and finesse move for these guys? 86 for Chris Holmes. 86 finesse move as well. 85 block shed, 80 pursuit. What a monster. Sandoval Slaughter up to an 81. 86 speed is super fast coming off the edge. Shelton Neal is up to a 78. 
What about tackling for Sandoval Slaughter? 73, 91 hit power. He has 89 finesse move. Decently high block shed at a 78. Not great. Not bad. Defensive tackle Daryl Bradford up to an 81. Strength isn't that high. Albert Johnson up to a 79. He was amazing in his true freshman season. Insane acceleration for him. And I want to see what his finesse move is up to. This thing might was it might be like 94. 93. It went up four with 83 block shed. He is an animal. Get him a lot of playing time. Colt 45 in his senior season is going to be an 81 overall. Devin White up to a 92, though. 92 speed. Awareness plus 5 is going to add for a lot of that. Catching goes up very slightly. Show me tackling. Ah, only plus 2. It is an 81, which is good. 86 hit power. 82 power move. 96 finesse move. 85 block shed. 90 pursuit. 85 zone. 80 man. Very, very good. Like what we see from him. He was a god last year. Nick Olsen's up a little bit. And then at cornerback. We have three corners with 93 speed. Mike Marshall going to play a lot this year. I have to see what he brings to the table. So we got a very fast secondary at this point. Um, none of them can really catch all that well. But I don't really care. None of them tackle all that well. Good hit power overall for most of these guys. Show me coverage. Derek Higgins is up to 93 man. And 89 zone. Jeez, what a monster he is. A free safety. Devin Robeson is up to an 85. Still only 85 speed. What's his hit power? 73 only, but hopefully good zone coverage. 91. That's killer. And then a strong safety. Mike Lee is up to an 88 with 93 speed. 94 acceleration is super high. He's also got 88 jumping, 75 tackle. His hit power is so low. Should be way higher. Great power and finesse move for Ernest Harmon. He almost should be playing linebacker. We probably could have moved him, but 92 man, 89 zone for Mike Lee. 84 press. We honestly could have moved Ernest Harmon to linebacker. He would probably be a beast. Maybe next year. And that kicker, Pete Riley, up to an 88. Slippery Pete, 75 awareness. And if we go all the way over to kick power, 90. With 88 kick accuracy, and he's only a junior. So we'll have him next year, and he also operates as our punter. I don't really care for Kyle Day at all. But wow, very good training results for us. I am super excited to hop into season number four. Might have to cut some players, though. We have to cut two players. Fullback, Michael Harrison. There's no reason to be on the team anymore. And then... Andrew Alexander is a, is a bust from a 50 down to a 40. Can we cut him? Yes. Goodbye. I should also mention Ozark State is moving from the Sun Belt to the SEC West. Our schedule gets even tougher as we might see Alabama. And when I say my, like, we're going to see these teams. Alabama, LSU, Mississippi State's ranked number 10. Auburn's in the top five. Mizzou's at number nine. Kentucky's in the top 15. The Florida Gators are really good. Tennessee, we had a crazy game with them last year, but we've gotten even better. Vanderbilt, South Carolina, Texas A&M. None of these schools are jokes. And we're joining the SEC. Welcome the Outlaws to the SEC West. We're going to end this episode with redshirting players. And who do we want to redshirt? It's an interesting question. At running back, anybody? I think Kurt Graves almost certainly is going to get red shirt, just so we can save him for another year. Um, at quarterback, probably no one. We're just going to keep them as they are. These these two QBs we recruited, by the way, ungodly slow. Like, good lord. A wide receiver, anybody? Uh, no. I mean, we could red shirt roll in Francisco. It'd be weird. I don't think we're going to do that. I mean, like, it almost feels like it'd be smart to, though. Keep him for another year. And then run with Tony Gates, who looks like he's a beast. I don't know. We're not going to. Tight end, nobody. Offensive line, Donald Hall for sure. We've redshirt pretty much everyone. Uh, and that trend's going to continue uh, for a lot of our players. We've redshirt so many guys. Jeez, these defensive tackles are terrible. Uh, we're going to redshirt 
Julian Peters. And we're going to redshirt Adam Jones at cornerback. Willie Mays at cornerback. Branch can play very you know, occasionally when he sees the field. Uh, Adam Boyd, we're going to redshirt. And that is it. Those are our redshirt players for season number four. That's going to do it for me, guys. I will go over the recruiting board in the next episode. I am super excited for season four. We join the SEC. We're going to be going over the schedule. And it's going to be probably very difficult. But this team had to take the next step. We weren't going to sit, uh, sit and stay in the Sun Belt for another year. We are ready to improve and start facing the best of the best on a consistent basis. If that means a lot of losses, so be it. I think that might happen. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.